Hey guys, I am Adam. Welcome to the Vintage Sanctuary and Happy New Year. Happy 2023. Uh, in 2023, may you be mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally healthy. I hope you have a fantastic year, both in the hobby, in your work, if, you, uh, if you're not retired or if you work, uh, in your family life, in everything that you do. So, uh, Joe, for Soft Corners, has asked us to give our thoughts on condition, and I'm going to do this by showing a number of cards, most I have shown before, but at the end I will show two cards that are relatively new to my collection that I have not shown before, and in my humble opinion, I would call both of them Grail cards, although many people in the hobby would just call, I guess, one of them a Grail card, and some of you might think neither of them are Grail cards, but... Stick around if you would like, and you know you can make your call, and you can let me know in those comments down below if you want. Okay, uh, what can I say about Joe? Well, whatever you do, do not subscribe to Joe's channel for Soft Corners. Uh, do not watch his videos. Do not uh, like them. Uh, do not turn on his notification bell. Do not make comments because his channel is growing way too fast already. And uh, he's busy, man. He's busy building sets from scratch. He's got a lot of friends in the hobby already that he's busy connecting with and sending each other care packages and texting one another. So, you know, do him a favor and just stay the hell away from his channel. All right, now that we have that out of the way, Okay, you know I'm totally joking. Go check out Joe for Soft Corners. Awesome guy. He's got a great sense of humor, so I think he appreciated uh, my humor there. All right, let's get rolling. Let me turn this camera around. So the first card I would like to show is one that I actually picked up at the National. And it's in a grade of three. By the way, I, be I believe the rest of the cards that I'm going to show have a grade of less than three. So lower grades. Notice how off-center this is. I mean, it is just about miscut to the bottom. But you know what? I absolutely love this card. Uh, clean image, nice registration, uh, absolutely off-center, but wonderfully sharp. The back is gorgeous as well. Plus, I did not... Uh, pay a lot of money for this card, you know, when comparing it to the price of this card in a very good three. So uh, I realized that card would drive some people nuts because of the off-centering, but I just love the card. Is it possible I could upgrade it someday? Sure, it's a possibility if the right 1941 play ball roughing, you know, came along at the right price, then it could happen. Um, but I'm happy with the one I have. So uh, you know, that's pushing it. I mean, if it were down even a little bit more, uh, then I probably would not be happy with it and I would just sell the card. By the way, let me just say that if, if I don't like a card, if something bugs me about it, then I'll just sell it and, um, and get something that I like and I enjoy. There's no card that I must have. So if I have to give so much on condition in order to afford a card that I no longer like the look of the card, then I'll just move on and, you know, not pursue that card or wait patiently and maybe I'll get lucky and uh, a really low grade will come along that, that uh, you know, I can live with uh, where I, um, where whatever defects it has don't, don't bother me. All right, moving on. Uh, this is the 34 to 36 Batter Up Bill Dickey in a 2.5. You know, it's got a little toning, it's got a little wear, but overall, I think this card is just gorgeous. Uh, very happy with it. Uh, really nice color. Blank back. Um, so, a little bit of paper wrinkling here, but it doesn't really show up on the front. Or if it does, it's very, very light. I'm not a fan of creases. But, you know, I just consider that kind of some minor paper wrinkling there that doesn't, doesn't quite uh, go to being a, a full 
crease, if you will. So I'm cool with that. By the way, I also had a 1.5 of this card that was a different color, and I ultimately sold it because uh, it had some paper wrinkles right across the face, and part of the number 30 was scraped off, and uh, that just ended up being a deal breaker for me. Loved, I, I, I would love to have a copy of that card, but not that copy, so I went ahead and let it go, and who knows if I'll if I will find another, we will see. But I hung on to this one because uh, this one meets my standards, and I don't see myself ever looking to upgrade this 34 batter up Bill Dickey. I really like it the way it is. All right, 51 Bowman and a 2.5 uh, Yogi Berra. Notice you can see some light paper wrinkling up here in the upper left. You can see a little toning on the corners, a little corner wear, but wow, the registration and the color. Uh, and plus, I did not pay a lot for this card. See, you can see a little, I think, probably factory paper wrinkling down here. But this is a card that I did not pay a lot of money for relative to other copies of this card. In fact, I think I got a fantastic deal. So I'm happy with it. I love it just the way it is. Is it possible that another copy could come along and I could upgrade at some point? I mean, it's possible, but it's pretty unlikely. Really happy I got into that card for not much money, and uh, I think it's just gorgeous. So that works for me. Okay, continuing on. This is a 52 Topps Yogi Bear. And now here's what's interesting. This is an absolutely gorgeous card and a good two. Um, the centering is just phenomenal for a 52 Top Yogi Berra, and the sharpness is phenomenal for a 52 Top Yogi Berra, as well as the color. It is just, you know, really vibrant. So this is an amazing card. So why is it a two? It's got just a tiny bit of paper loss on the front and kind of mottled paper loss on the back, mostly up here by the uh, number 191. But I can live with that. In fact, I generally do not buy multiples of cards, but um, I have I have two uh, fours, a PSA four and an SGC four that are really nice of this 1952 Topps Yogi Berra. And after I had those two already, I went ahead and picked this one up, I thought for a pretty good price because I thought it was just such a gorgeous card for a two. So really happy with that card. Of course, sure. I prefer it not to have the paper loss on the back or the tiny bit of paper loss on the front. But if, if it didn't have those things, you know, it'd be a much more expensive card and I, I may not have went after it. Okay, moving on. Uh, another national pickup. At first, I was, you know, wondering if I could live with authentic as a quote-unquote grade, but uh, I've come to terms with it. Yes, for certain cards that are budget busters for me, this was already a budget buster for me. Absolutely, I'll take authentic. I looked at a lot of ones, and the ones were all really beat up compared to this authentic. Plus, this authentic cost a lot less than most all of those ones. Uh, it's off center in a couple directions. That doesn't bother me because what I really cared about was the surface and the colors and uh, the registration, and uh, I think this card nails surface colors and registration. It measures right. I think it's just a light trim at the top. Uh, the back is absolutely gorgeous. You can see a little uh, factory paper wrinkle there up in the upper right. So could I see myself um, upgrading this card at some point? I guess it's theoretically possible I could find like a a one grade that I really like and, and buy it and sell this, but unlikely because it's unlikely I'm going to find a one that looks this nice and the one, you know, the, the one graded card will probably cost, you know, more than I paid for this and I don't necessarily want to put more money into a 52 Tops Willie Mays. I'd rather spend, save that money for something else. So, you know, this is probably the only 52 Tops Willie Mays I will ever have, most likely, and I'm totally cool with that. I think this card is absolutely gorgeous. I'm proud of it. Uh, as an authentic, uh, that doesn't bother me a bit. Now, if this were, you know, if this were um, a relatively inexpensive card from the 70s, me personally, I would not go for an authentic, of course. I'd go for, you know, a numerical grade, but this is a, you know, tough uh, 1952 Tops card. So, 
Um, authentic is just fine by me. Super stoked to have it. Another grail that I picked up, and uh, this card is a 1.5, absolutely stunning. It really does have this incredible name rectangle. Look how sharp that corner is and not much chipping on the red. Uh, again, you can see that surface quality is the most important uh, thing to me. It's got this scrunching on the side. I don't know if those were rubber bands or what, and you can really see it on the back. Um, but it's nice, beautiful, Gem Mint 10 scrunching, the way it's so uniform. Uh, that's some uh, just stunning scrunching there. Anyway, yes, it's got some scrunching, but you know what? Something had to give. I wasn't going to be able to afford this card in a high grade or even a mid grade. It was going to be something like a 1 or maybe a 1.5, which is, you know, where I went with it. And even at that, this was big time pushing my budget to its absolute limits, causing me to sell some things to compensate. So I don't ever see myself upgrading that card. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I can live with its, you know, defects, if you will. But uh, to me, it was just a fantastic choice for me. I, I think it's absolutely stunning. Uh, even with the scrunching there. I just love that card. Well, believe it or not, we have finally made it to the new pickups. Are you ready? 52 Bowman, Yogi Berra, and a good two. Uh, this card came up as a buy it now recently at a nice price, and I snapped it up. It's got just a little bit of corner wear, but other than that, those of you that know this card know that... Uh, the registration is often off with a blurry face and there's often snowing and just the vibrancy of the colors here, the sharpness of the image. This is an absolutely fantastic card. Uh, the back is really nice and clean as well. The only thing I really see is a little bit of corner wear. Actually, to me, this card, you know, looks more like, like maybe a four, 3.5, um, but down by his belly button, I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, right about kind of in there, there's like this tiny little depression or something. It doesn't even break the paper. I, I'm wondering if that made it a two because this card does not seem to have any any um, creases or anything. So, wow, that's always super exciting when you can get a lower grade card at a lower price that's just just has stunning eye appeal. I'm not a big fan of corner wear, but you know, I can live with that little bit of corner wear there. And I actually think um, I'm I'm softening up some, Joe. I actually think that little bit of corner wear, you know, gives it some nice vintage appeal. Can't believe I'm, I'm saying that. So uh, that's probably a card I'll never upgrade. I mean, I just really love it. Uh, you know, we all love to get a card. Uh, I think almost all of us anyway, unless we collect a different way, just to get that card in a lower grade where the the eye appeal transcends the grade and we don't have to pay too much and we're super happy with the card. I think we all, you know, love that. Okay, grail time. I have always dreamed of owning a card that was one pinhole away from being a much higher grade. This was a buy it now and I snapped this thing up. Must confess, I sold a few coins to compensate. Um, this was not a comma card, so it was under the price threshold to be a comma card. I don't know how you guys feel about pinholes. This is my first card with a pinhole, but you know what? I will buy pinholed cards all day if they're like this. So without further ado, here comes the grail. The 1948-49 Leaf Stan Musial in a pristine, PR is for pristine, Wonderful. The one is for wonderful. In a wonderful, pristine. I mean, those of you who know Leaf know that the registration is, you know, all over the place. But look at this. This registration is spot on. What about sharpness? Those corners are sharp. What about uh, the freshness of the colors? Look at that red cap. This card is absolutely stunning. So what's holding it back? Well, you can kind of see it up there, the one pinhole uh, top center. A little bit of wear. I don't think it's curling, just a little bit of wear on that bottom corner, but wow. 
Okay, PSA put plastic, you know, on the back side of the card, so it's a little curling on these top corners. Um, so it's harder to see, but the back is nice and clean. That pinhole uh, from the front, you can kind of see it between the stand and the musual on the top. This card, I was st so stoked. So stoked. And you know, uh, if you're interested to go on eBay and look at all of the 4849 leaf stand musuals, and of course, if somebody doesn't like pinholes, fair enough, I get that. I don't mind at all. Uh, but if they don't like pinholes, this would not be the card for them. But if if the pinhole doesn't bother you, compare this to just about any uh, 4849 leaf stand musual on eBay or anywhere else for that matter that's for sale. And you know what? This one, this one might just be nicer. And this was not a comma card. So I am super stoked to have these new additions. I'm super stoked to have all these cards that I showed you. I picked these cards. Well, I picked these two, of course, because they're new pickups I wanted to show you. The rest, because they're lower grades in my collection. I do have several threes in my collection. I showed the one three, the red roughing, because it's so off-center, I wanted to talk about that. I could talk more about condition. I'll leave it at that. Check out Joe, Four Soft Corners, awesome guy. Thank you for having this contest, Joe. Thank you for sharing in my joy. I hope you had a wonderful and peaceful time in the vintage sanctuary. Man, those cards are just outrageously beautiful. Wow. Happy New Year, everyone.